Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Clapp, Director of Content for WorkInSports.com, and this is Facebook Live. Uh, you'll notice that tonight I don't have any fancy uh, banners or anything crazy going on, and it's because I'm going to be bringing in a live guest in a little while, and we're going to have a split screen, so it wouldn't make any sense. The, the graphics would go right over her face, which would be a, a bad thing for all of us. Um, as you come into the broadcast, a couple things I want to make note of. I would love it if you share where you're listening from. Your name, a little something like that, will pop you up on the screen. I always like to acknowledge everybody that's listening. And also, if you think uh, there are people that would benefit from this conversation and that would be interested in what we're doing here, please share it. Tag their name in the comments, uh, share it with them through whatever, whatever channel you want. And uh, we've been bringing more people into this, uh, this show, which will be a lot of fun. Our goal tonight, so my guest tonight, which I'll bring in a little bit, we're still going to hold off on that, uh, recently volunteered at the Pro Bowl and at the Super Bowl. So those volunteer events are something we've talked about before, opportunities to learn and gain experience in kind of a short-term format. You know, when you're interning, it's often six months, you know, or longer than that. But when you're volunteering, it might be a weekend, it might be a couple days. And if that's the case, you can gain a lot of experience in a short amount of time. So I wanted to bring in our guest tonight to talk a little bit more about that. Um, for everybody that is new to the show, as I said, I am Brian Clapp, Director of Content for WorkInSports.com. We are the leading job board for the sports industry. There are over 10,464, because I think there's actually 10,465 uh, active jobs on our site right now. Um, it is a membership site. And the reason we operate that way is because that allows us to get every single possible job out there and bring it in front of you, right? If we totally relied on just the employers paying us, then we'd only publish jobs from those people, those willing to pay that had budget to market their jobs. We figured it was better to get everything and put it out there for you. And that's the advantage of being a member with workinsports.com. If you are a student, and I know a lot of you that come to the lives are, there's a crazy good deal going on right now where if you have a .edu web, uh, email address, you can get a, a six-month membership. I want to make sure I say this right. You get a six-month membership for just $30. So you go to workinsports.com slash students. You get a $30 uh, six-month membership for $30, which is $5 a month. A little bit of quick uh, math there. And in doing so, you get everything we do. You get uh, all of our content, totally um, everything we do. Uh, and a full membership to all of our jobs. I want to say hi to a couple people out there. Robert, thanks for being here, of course, from uh, Pittsburgh. I knew I'd be very upset if you weren't here. Jennifer, glad you're here as well. Ryan, all you guys, good to see you again here from Boston. 11 days without a sports championship. Ryan, I love you, man. You are hilarious. Uh, Kai, good to meet you as well. Thanks for listening from uh, New Hampshire. We're about to New Hampshire. I'm a New England guy myself, so... Uh, it's just up in Maine this past summer. I'm from Massachusetts, which makes me an insufferable Boston sports fan. Um, so let's get to this. Thank you, everybody, for being here. As I said, as you come into the group, please let us know where you're listening from. Share it with people you think would be interested in being a part of this conversation. And uh, let's have a little bit of fun. So we're mixing it up tonight. We're bringing in... Let me get Kai off the screen here. If you notice, I'm looking around everywhere. It's par possibly partly because I'm trying to be a director. I'm trying to think about what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to be coherent. Uh, so there's a lot going on here. Um, so let's get to the fun parts. We're going to bring in our special guest. Welcome, everybody. Casey DeHart. Hi, Casey. Hi. Can everyone hear me? All right. Everybody let her know. And in the comments, let Casey know if you can hear her, because that's important. We want to make sure everybody can hear. I can hear you just fine, which is important. Um, so let's talk about this. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on is because of your experience pro at the volunteering at the Pro Bowl, but also volunteering at the Super Bowl over the last couple of weeks. Those are some really cool experiences. Before we get into all that, though, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Tell us um, your kind of when and why. Like, when did you figure out you wanted to work in the sports industry and why was that? Um, so it actually started, whew, I graduated in 2010. And I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do. I had a full ride to a school, but I ended up not taking it because I didn't want to just go for an undergrad in just general studies. Okay. So I was in school for about a year. I did online and then I kind of took some time off. And um, I think around then, like I kind of figured out, like I knew I wanted something like entertainment and sports, but I didn't know what. So, okay. um, so I ended up, I found Full Sail. I have remembered that they came to my high school 
and they put on like a little show for us and all their degree programs. So I checked it out and they actually, they had a sports marketing and media. It's like, oh, this is really cool. So kind of just applied and just like went into for like not really knowing what to expect, but I just knew I wanted to work in sports and I've right. grew up playing sports my whole life. So I kind of knew a little bit like about the industry, but not like the business side of it. And so, and I know like a lot of people are in like sports management, but mine focused a lot on like the marketing and the media side of it. Okay. Um, which is actually, it's really, really cool. Um, and Full Sail is a great school. And so I just kind of from there and everything specific is like specific to your degree. So I didn't have to take any biology or chemistry. Um, I had like an art class and a math class, but psychology, they even relate it to like fun in the workforce. So okay. it's kind of cool. Like they relate everything to your degree. That's really cool. It's uh, kind of cool that you didn't have to take some of those extra level classes. So yeah. while you were in school and while you were kind of focused on that media marketing side, did you get any clarity into what it was you wanted to pursue after graduation? Do you feel like you have a little more clarity now? Um, I definitely have a lot more clarity now. I know exactly what I want to do. It's more so now the steps to get there. Right. But in school, I honestly had no idea for the longest time I wanted to be the next Erin Andrews. She was the woman that I looked up to. I wanted to broadcast. And my my main dream was if I could broadcast from the Super Bowl, like report from the Super Bowl, like I could die the next day, like I'd be happy. <laughs> but um, I just, I didn't really have like any experience on the broadcast side. Okay. And even though we had like two classes for it and we had to do reels and we had to do breaking news and like write scripts and stuff. Um, as it was going on, I knew that I didn't necessarily want to do sales, but it was a lot of marketing. And um, I just, I kind of feel like going through school, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I think I kind of figured out what I wanted to do once I started working in the industry. Okay. And what was that? What are you, what are you focused in on now? So I started out with the Wilmington Blue Rocks minor league baseball team in Delaware. And okay. I was the assistant merchandise, the assistant director of merchandise. So I helped my boss, like everything was like merchandising, running the team store and overseeing those employees. But when you're in minor league baseball, you do everything. Yeah. And so I helped out a lot with the mark, with the marketing and the promotions and helping out with Photoshop and doing some graphics. And as I was doing that, like, I love the promotions. I loved like being on the field and pumping the crowd up, throwing t-shirts or, right. you know, getting the fan pump to, you know, throw out pizza boxes for free pizza. And as I was going through that summer, like I knew that like the entertainment side was what I wanted to do and to like have that fan engagement. Yeah, totally. So let's talk about it. You're in the off season now, obviously. Um, let's talk about your latest move. You went and volunteered at the Pro Bowl and the Super Bowl. We'll get to the Super Bowl later. Let's talk about that Pro Bowl experience. What led you to this opportunity? How'd you find out about it? What was the process for getting approved into it? Tell us a little bit more about that. Give us a little more detail. Um, so actually the Pro Bowl is really easy to get into and I first knew about it from my school because it takes place in Florida, um, at least for the past few years it has. I'm not Beautiful, sure sunny where. Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure where it's going to be at, but since my school's in Florida, they have so many connections to a whole bunch of organizations down there. And I first got an email for, I want to say maybe like two years ago and I couldn't do it at the time. But I had remembered this year, like, okay, like, let me go ahead and um, try to find it this year. The link that they sent me, it obviously it expired. It's for a new year. So I actually had to Google it and then <laughs> look on Twitter to yeah. find out the link for volunteering. And once I did, you honestly go in and you just sign up for a shift. And I mean, that's honestly pretty much it. There was, you could do either oh. help with like the full, the fan mobile pass, or you could help with the Pro Bowl experience, which was what I did. And so honestly, you just go and you sign up for a shift. They'll send you a training book and you get a t-shirt. We got a jacket. We got like a small lanyard. Like they, they take care of you. The NFL That's really good. Does. You get gear out of it. We do. Yeah. So the role sounds, I mean, you, you explained the role a little bit there. What about the opportunity overall? Were you able to meet some of the higher level managers or some of the other people running the events or what was kind of your experience that you could pull away from it? Were you able to network some? Um, yes and no, because I kind of feel like I really enjoyed working um, those, those stations. Like 
there was like the 40 meter dash and um, the obstacle course and some uh, like throwing drills and all of mm -hmm. that. And like where we were like at stations, like we ran those stations, like we were in charge of those stations and like we had kind of a supervisor, but that supervisor was also a volunteer. Okay. So I didn't get to really meet too many like upper management besides like my direct supervisor. There's okay. two of them. Um, that they just kind of went around to each station. Um, and it's really difficult because there's a lot of people and a lot of us are just volunteers. Right. And you just have a captain, which is also a volunteer. So you can connect with them and you can build a relationship with them, but it won't necessarily get you anywhere. Right. So I tried to kind of talk to people as like they were stopping by the station and like my higher up boss who um, was hired by the NFL to help with the volunteers and almost kind of be like that volunteer coordinator. Um, so it was kind of difficult to do that, but I did make some friends, so like people that I work with, I did make some friends. So, I mean, I guess like those are some good connections. Yeah, for sure. It always helps to make some peer connections as well, because you never know when those people are going to get jobs somewhere else and they can be somebody else, you know, working at a different organization and could exactly. be in for you even on the peer level. Do you feel like that experience was a worthwhile one for you? Oh yeah. Um, I worked, um, I was part of the Pro Bowl experience. So like we got put at different stations and I really wanted to do it um, for a few more days, but it started on a Wednesday and I had to leave Friday to fly home. So I could only do it one day and I really wish I could have done it for more, but I was stationed, I did the obstacle course and it's really cool because, you know, you still get to get the technology of things to help people with the app and to learn how that goes. And we were encouraged to, you know, take a look at the map, figure out point people where to go. And we were just pumping people up and talking to the fans as they were coming through the lines, finding out who their favorite players are, if they got to meet anyone, yeah. if they saw the practices and people come from all over and especially people that, you know, are excited for the Super Bowl that they flew in from Los Angeles or, you know, like, I think that is just the coolest thing because people pay a lot of money for these events. And so it was, it was just, it was so much fun. Like these little kids, we had these like group of like three or four kids that constantly were just coming back to the <laughs> office, of course, like five, six, seven times. Yeah. And there was actually um, a coach's wife from the Miami Dolphins. She kept on bringing her two little girls and um, they were like, they were super sweet. Like they were a really nice family. Um, That's cool. But it was just, it was really fun. And I honestly, I would do the Pro Bowl every single year to be a part of like one of those stations just because of the fan engagement and like really getting con to connect with the NFL fans from all over. So that sounds awesome. For those people yeah. that are just coming into a live session, we're talking with Casey DeHart, who recently volunteered at the Pro Bowl and at the Super Bowl. We're going to get into that Super Bowl conversation now. I'm Brian Clapp, the director of content for WorkinSports.com. We do these Facebook Live events every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, generally, we have a theme that we try to dig into, some actionable advice or a guest, like we have Casey today. And then for the second half hour, we'll do some open-ended questions, any questions that you guys have as a uh, as it pertains to your sports career uh, and questions you may have about your sports career. Um, if you're coming into the show, make sure that you uh, let us know where you're listening from. It's always great to hear from people. Roberto, I see that Roberto from Costa Rica, which is super Ooh. cool. Uh, Zach Gross is saying hi to Casey. James is saying hi, hi to Casey. Everybody's saying hi to Casey. Nobody wants to say hi to hi me. Everyone wants to, everyone wants to say hi to Casey. Um, and then uh, we will continue on in our conversation. So again, if you are... Uh, feel like you have other people in your network that can benefit from this conversation, please share it with them. Tag their name in the comments. Comments. It'll let them know what's going on and bring them into the conversation, which is always good for us to keep building that audience. Um, and again, we do this every Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, so keep coming back. Casey, let's talk more about the Super Bowl now. Uh, after the Pro Bowl, it looks like you went and volunteered at a country music festival and then went to uh, the Super Bowl. How did, Was this opportunity harder to get? Because you made it sound like the Pro Bowl was pretty easy to walk into. Um, oh, Becky's saying hi. We got to make sure we say hi to Becky. Becky Crowell is saying hi to hi. both of us. Thank you. What an awesome experience. Very cool. Um, so talk about the Super Bowl now. Was that a different experience as far as getting the opportunity? It made it sound like it was pretty easy for the Pro Bowl. What was it like for the Super Bowl? So the Super Bowl, they actually have a whole application and an interview process. Okay. Um, they accepted about 10,000 volunteers. 
and they had, I want to say over 35,000 people apply. And wow. yeah, it was the most that wow. a Super Bowl committee ever has had applied. And the applications I want to say opened are opened up in March. Okay. Um, either March or April, and they close. I want to say I think they close around May sometime, like May to early June. So if you're thinking of applying to work the next Super Bowl in Miami, definitely be on the lookout come like March. Um, oh, so you really have to think ahead. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because then they go through the interview process, and the interview process took place in July and I want to say August, July okay. and August, and then they let you know by the end of September. And okay. wow. Yeah, and um. And honestly, like the interview process, I was so nervous because I'm thinking like, oh, it's like a one on one, like, mm -hmm. but actually like you're there with like maybe like 75 other people and oh, they wow. have a whole bunch of volunteer captains that just sit down on the table and you're just talking to someone one on one for like maybe five to 10 minutes. And okay. they just say, why do you want to work the Super Bowl? Um, like, do you have any experience in events or, you know, any sport like they just kind of ask you, ask you small talk like that. Yeah. And um, in the beginning though, which I was told, so they played music to kind of get us all pumped up. And we <laughs> like, we had like a dancing line, people going down doing dancing. And what they do is there are people watching to see how well like you're getting into the dancing to see if yeah. you have that enthusiasm and you know, that excitement. Mm -hmm. And if not, there was a good chance you might not have gotten chosen. So it's a dance battle. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they had a dance battle and like people were watching to see who was getting into it. That's cool. Um, but yeah. And then after that, then they kind of um, they were on like a waiting period. And then the end of September, they let you know when um, if you got accepted or not. And I got accepted and then they let you pick a training date. Um, they sent that out around November and then you had a training date in for one day in January. So I had to go back down to Atlanta and the training was pretty much just kind of like an overview of everything going on. And they had five different roles and you got, you got to, uh, you got to choose which is like your top favorite when you're doing the application process. And then um, they kind of just go over like the rules and like the fan first mentality and like the human trafficking taking place. Like if you see something, say something. Okay. And then they kind of went over like a map of like where everything's gonna be and like where we could go. And um, it was, it's definitely a lot more of a process than the Pro Bowl was. Yeah, it sounds a lot more structured for sure. Yes. Did you enjoy it? Did you feel like after all that work to get involved in this, to think ahead, to go through the ad interview process, then when it actually came up and it's time to go, did you feel like it was a good experience? All right. So I'm oh, there's a heavy gonna, pause there. <laughs> I, I am not going to put the Super Bowl down, but um, there was, I'll just say that there was a lot more people, like a lot more volunteers and a lot more of us in groups. And what we were doing was definitely not the same experience that I did at the Pro Bowl. Okay. Um, we did Super Bowl Live. And Super Bowl Live um, was where a whole bunch of activations were. So Hyundai had their activations, but that's run by Hyundai people. And yep. then you had like the Ford Experience run by Ford people. And then there was an ESPN and like Tostitos, like Tostitos had their cantina and the Bud Lake Beer Garden, each run by their own people. Okay. So our job was pretty much just kind of like crowd control. And we held up um, like picture frames that like when people were coming in, like to greet them, like, hey, like come get your picture and okay. just to kind of like pump people up that way. Um, there were concerts that um, I did work a concert and it was a lot of like crowd control and making sure that walkways were kept clear. And, you know, you see something, you say something and mm -hmm. um, that it was definitely a lot different. But I did get to work the Vince Lombardi trophy statue. That, which that was actually really cool. It was the first night, and they had this huge statue of the Vince Lombardi Trophy, and you could like walk up this to this platform and take your picture with it. And at six thirty-five and eight forty-five, it shot out confetti, and oh, they cool. played this like "Welcome to Atlanta" song, mm -hmm. and that was really cool because a lot of media people were coming up to us asking like, "Hey, what time's the confetti going off? Like, we want to get some videos, we want to get some pictures." Mm -hmm. So I did get to meet a lot of people on like the media side that right. wanted that, you know, really cool shot. Um, and 
Oh, I guess someone said about oh best Super Bowl leg too. Um, What's that? Oh, did I miss something? We had the same. Okay, so Jake, experience. yeah, our guy Jake, we had the same sign near the experience with the Super Bowl live. Yeah, I totally get it, Casey. There yeah. you go. But um, but that was so cool because you know we still got to interact with the fans. Like, hey, like they will just be staring at the thing, and it's like, hey, like do you want to go get your picture? And they're like, yeah, yeah. So like you know we took them through and took them up, got their picture and. Um, it was still like really cool. I actually met the people that built that built that. Okay. And so I was able to connect with them and they actually um they gave us um a card of all of the event people, like project managers and like the president of the Super Bowl Live and all those people because they're like, Hey, these people might be walking around. If you see them, make sure you say hi. Yeah. Um, not a lot of them were walking around, at least it was dark, so we probably wouldn't recognize them that much. But it was cool to meet the people that like built some like a lot of the activation stations and I got to connect with them a little bit, which was that was probably like really cool. But I mean, still like pumping people up from the Super Bowl. I did get to meet, make a lot of connections and like new friends. And there was a guy that I actually met who he works for um, this company called like Experience down in Atlanta. Okay. They do like ticket upgrades with um, different MLB teams. So each season, like preseason, they have to go to these different teams that they're partnered with and they have to kind of go over like their ticket upgrading system or something like that. Okay. And so um, he and he had just started, but I like we became friends like we had worked together. And so a lot of people that I met, like actually just ended up becoming friends like on LinkedIn or Facebook or, you know, whatever. Um, so that was still the Super Bowl. It was an experience. And um it just the pro bowl and the super bowl like comparing them they were definitely two different yeah definitely two different experiences but it was still like to have the super bowl on your resume like employers are going to ask about it right. and they're going to want to know about it so it's still like it, it's still really really good to have that experience well that was the comment i was going to make is that for one it sounds yeah. like you're following up with some of the connections through linkedin which is extremely smart yes. but then also that that power on your resume to have some of those things yeah, you'd rather the experience might have been a little bit more educational for you or made more connections, but to have that on your resume is going to be a good conversation starter, if nothing else. Right. So it sounds like you're, you're getting some real benefits out of it. Look back now, now that it's both are done, are there any differences or anything you would have approached differently as far as your strategy or how you would have approached, I don't know, certain events or opportunities? Or do you look back and feel like, yeah, I kind of nailed this? Um, I think that, I mean, I did the best that I could. Um, I definitely, looking back, I know for next year, if I end up volunteering at the Pro Bowl again, I'm definitely gonna do it for multiple days. Um, and I would probably do it probably more toward like um, like the middle of the day, I did the evening shift. So I would probably do it more towards like the middle of the day. Um, it seems that's where like a lot of people are out and about and then like the evening, they're kind of like going out to dinner and everything. Um, with the Super Bowl, I think what I would probably do, and this is kind of like a way from just like working the events is I know like people had asked about with like connections on LinkedIn is I would probably research some people that I know like for sure that I wanted to meet like in the NFL events side and right. just be like, Hey, do you have 30 minutes to like get coffee before the day starts or, you know, anytime in the evening after everything dies down, I kind of feel like I would take that approach next time. Yeah. That's some great advice. Time, you kind of don't know what to expect. Right. And there is so much going on during Super Bowl week. Like everybody under the sun is there where there's just mass chaos of people that you almost like don't even know who to look for. Like you could be walking like Roger could that good doubt could be on your one side, but then like, you know, the president for NFL events could be on your left side. Like there's just, there's so many people. And yeah, so I feel like kind of narrowing it down and trying to kind of like make some meetings next year. I think that would kind of be my different strategy. It's a crazy experience. When I worked at CNN, um, we had this rotation where uh, every year, the, the I mean, I was entry level or mid level staff. So every year um, they would try to rotate through people and say, okay, you get to go to the Super Bowl this year. You get to go to the World Series. You get to go to this event. And so we, everybody kind of got an opportunity to go see some of these things. Well, mm -hmm. when it came my turn, it was actually the Super Bowl in Atlanta. <laughs> oh, so I was in Atlanta and got to go next door, which was kind of... <laughs> 
a, a bummer, but um, it was still like a crazy experience. I mean, it's just so many people and so much activity from Radio Row and all the different sponsors and all the different things going on. And unless you go in with a strategy or an approach, I mean, it can just be kind of overwhelming. And then you walk away thinking uh, it didn't really work out the way I thought it would, right? Yeah, it's the first the first year is definitely kind of kind of your experimental year, kind of mm -hmm. like trial and error to see like, okay, like here's here's what actually happened because you don't really know what to expect. And now you can learn for next year doing it again, like, okay, this is what I need to do next year in order to get better connections or yeah. this is how I have to approach it. Or, you know, maybe next year see about being like a captain and, you know, instead of just a regular volunteer. Um, the first year is definitely, um, definitely like trial and error in that way. Then you'll know for next year what to expect and how to make it better. See, there's Zach, of course, that's yeah, the way doing doing homework. Network, networking yeah. homework is key, right? Yeah. Zach is the networking king who will yeah, go up and talk to anybody body. at any time. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. So anybody listening that wants to ask Casey any questions, now's a great time to do it. You can put those in the comments as well. Uh, a lot of great information that Casey's sharing about her experiences volunteering at the Pro Bowl, volunteering at the Super Bowl. Uh, if you're just tuning in, please let us know where you're listening from. If you have other people that you think can benefit from this conversation, please share it with them. Uh, and know that we do this every Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. I don't always have a guest. Sometimes I do. This is the first time. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Casey, for being here. Um, but we'll usually have a, a theme, something we're going to discuss, you know, whether it's social media networking or whether it's mastering your cover letter or something career advice driven for your sports career. Uh, I'll handle that for the first half hour and then we'll dive into some open-ended questions from all of you that are out there listening. So that's our normal format. But today we brought in Casey because she had this recent experience with volunteering and it's an interesting subject to dive into. Uh, anybody listening out there that has questions, add those to the comments any kind of questions are fair game. Um, well, you know, appropriate questions. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about sports careers here and volunteering and those sort of things. So uh, bring those in. I know Zach has a question. I know he wants to. Um, so again, I will reset the stage a little bit. I'm Brian Clapp, the director of content for workinsports.com. I'm also the host of the Work in Sports podcast, which if you're listening and you're not subscribed to, I don't understand you. Um, we have 156 episodes, I believe now, and everything is either me handling a fan question from someone out there in the audience, or I do a deep dive into something related to our industry, the sports industry, uh, about careers and getting yourself started. Or I have an expert guest on the show where I um, interview anybody from Trip Keister, who Casey and I were just talking about, who is the yeah. Potomac Nationals manager and then their player development department at the Washington Nationals, to Tiara Brown, Tiara Brown, who was on the show this past week, who's the Charlotte Hornets manager of social responsibility. We're always bringing in experts to discuss and uh, talk about different ways to get into the sports industry. Maylin Vu, who's the assistant director of talent acquisition for the Cleveland Indians. I mean, we're really digging in deep to what you need to do to get hired in the sports industry and all those things you need to take advantage of. I do understand it's Valentine's Day today. Uh, so I do know that some of you are probably uh, distracted or have other things going on. But you know what? The show goes on. We have things to talk about here. So if you have questions, please pop them up. Um, where's my guy, Robert Lewis, Robert Lewis says that we're going in and out, which is terrible from a technical standpoint. If anybody else having that problem, please let me know. Um, the feed looks good from my end. So I've heard Casey just fine. Casey, have you heard me okay tonight? Yeah, perfectly actually. Okay. Okay, good. If anybody else is having any kind of, uh, trouble in that regard, see, there's Glenn. Glenn said that he couldn't make it tonight cause he's uh, happy Valentine's day. So he's probably like out to dinner with his wife and he's just <laughs> sneaking his phone down. <laughs> And he's putting a little comment in there like, hey, it's Valentine's Day, but I'm not going to make it tonight. So uh, thanks, Glenn, for even checking in with us. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, there we go, Robert. Here we go. Robert, I knew if I challenged him would come up with a question for us. So Casey, did you get to see any of the Super Bowl event while volunteering? Um, what do you mean? Like the actual game? I think he wants to know if you saw the, the actual, game. <laughs> the actual game? No. Um, I did not get to see the actual game. So the way that that works actually, um, and that's and it's what I've been told because one of my good friends, like he's actually a um, good friend and a mentor of mine. Um, he works for Mercedes Benz and he works for the Falcons. Um, and he does some of like their events and like their promotions. So the NFL rents out like the entire stadium and like nobody from Mercedes Benz actually works the game except for like very hand select 
you. Like the NFL will be like, hey, we need some people to work this or that. Um, there are like some people, um, if Mercedes Benz, I know partners with some colleges, they'll reach out to those colleges and say like, hey, like we need some people. Because I saw like one guy on LinkedIn, that's how he got to actually work the game because it was through his college. Um, and a lot of it is just security. So we didn't get to actually see any of the event. I was watching it from a bar and it was <laughs> crazy, but it was right down the street from the stadium. And so it was, it was nuts after the game. It was crazy. I read a story about a guy from the Boston area who is a diehard Patriots fan who got a job as a security guard at for Mercedes Benz stadium and worked there all season long, just hoping the Patriots would make the super bowl and he could work the game, which I thought was fantastic. That, that's did a true he, fan right there. Did he actually work the game? Yeah. He actually got to work the game. Oh, that's yep. awesome. He put in a full year of working in security for the team so that he could be on the staff for that. I, I read, I, can't remember exactly where I read it, but I think it was a reputable source. It seemed like a good story. <laughs> if nothing yeah, else, it was a good story. Uh, Jake's saying that the connection is good. I think it's more of an internet connection thing for his part. Okay, good. So that means that our stream is working just fine. And even Robert confirms that, saying that it is working now, which is good because it would be terrible if you couldn't hear us. That would make for a very bad live session. Uh, bring in more questions, people, or else we can wrap it up and call it a val Valentine's Day. I know you guys uh, enjoy these sessions. Sometimes we go really long, which is great. And other times, hey, if it's Valentine's Day and everybody wants to go home and, and do their own thing or uh, get to knock off early tonight, that's fine, too. I'm going to give it a little bit more time and let you know that we will take more questions. But I get it. Sometimes, you know, we'll go long. Sometimes we'll go short. My original plan for these whole sessions was to go a half an hour. The first six, we ended up going an hour. So just, you never know. Um, so Robert, it sounds like uh, nothing else coming in from Robert there. So maybe we'll just wrap it up tonight. Casey, thank you so much for coming on and explaining so much more about what it's like to volunteer at these major events. It's a part of gaining experience for this industry. And that's one of the things we talk about. One of the pillars of getting into the sports industry is gaining experience and those sticky things on your resume that stand out to people, whether it's volunteering or informational interviews or internships or uh, you know different events that you can be a part of. You really took advantage of that. And so kudos to you. I, I will say um, that they will send like a thank you email out. And especially for the Pro Bowl, we got a thank you email. And there are um, there were a few different people of like the NFL events that had made a comment like, oh, like, thank you volunteers so much. Like without you, you know, this wouldn't be possible. And they state like their name and their job title. And because of that, I'm going to go through and connect with them on LinkedIn and send them a message like, hey, you know, like, thank you for the email. You know, I volunteered at the Pro Bowl and um, yeah, just kind of create a connection that way. And who knows if something will boil for next year. No, it's a great idea is that those, and also it's something to actually look at the way they're handling themselves and bring that into your own rep, uh, like uh, routine It's like, if they're, if the pro bowl is reaching out to everybody on an individual level and saying, Hey, thanks for being a part of this. It almost reminds you sometimes and all of us that you can do a really good job by, um, by having those personal moments too and sending out a personal card to somebody to say thank you for that in informational interview or say thank you for that volunteer opportunity. Those handwritten cards, a lot of times can show a lot more, um, personality and a little bit more care and a little more intention than just doing like an email blast. So, uh, Oh, Robert does have a question. What is next for Casey to heart? Oh, it's, you're on the spot. Woo! Oh What's man. All right. Um, so I am excited that I applied for, um, an internship that I do have a connection on the inside. So fingers crossed, I can at least get an interview. I'm not going to say with who or where it is. I don't want to like jinx anything, but I'm super excited for that. Um, I am looking at volunteering for the NFL draft. Um, I don't believe the information is up quite yet. I want to say probably like late February and March sometime. That's what I've been seeing from last year. Um, and then I'm making a trip out to Colorado in April for a few days. And the Rockies will actually be at home. So I'm going to see about job shadowing while I'm out there and try to kind of like, I know it's going to be the beginning of the season. So it might be a little tough because they're just kind of like getting things rolling. But um, I'm definitely going to try and job shadow this year. Um, I'm in North Carolina, and so we just got the Fayetteville Woodpeckers that were the Boys Creek Astros. <laughs> so I know it's like a strange name. Yeah. But um, I'm going to try and um, get into do some work with them, either like through promotions. Um, they have their job fair next week. So if anything, I'll kind of try and like work some games with them to just kind of like continue that experience because – 
the sports industry it is tough for full time. So, right. you know, anything to really get your foot in the door and really job shadowing is really huge. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot of that this year. And, um, throughout like with baseball, like going back down to the Braves and job shadowing with them again. Um, and then I'll probably try to job shadow with the Falcons this fall if I'm still in the area and um, job shadow and shadow my friend that uh, lives down there and works for them. Sounds like a, a pretty good plan. One of the things I was thought of, I thought of when you were speaking was that, you know, we talk, we've talked in before about how you can use LinkedIn as such a tool to connect with people. And obviously you're yeah. doing that, but sometimes you need to be creative about your in and your reason to talk to somebody. It's not just somebody you've met face to face. Maybe it's somebody you have a looser connection to. And the example I was thinking of is Andrew Howard was on our uh, podcast. He's the director. He's one of the communication managers or director of communication. I might get his title wrong for the NFL. And in the podcast, if you listen to it, he talked about how he worked the NFL draft. Well, this is a perfect kind of situation where you could connect with somebody like that on LinkedIn and say, hey, I heard you on the Work and Sports podcast. I've always wanted to you know, volunteer at the uh, NFL draft. I know you were involved with it. Is there any advice you have for me? Or something along those lines is a great way to kind of be creative. And not everybody's going to say yes, and not everybody's going to connect with you, and you'll be rejected sometimes. Andrew's a great guy. Maybe he won't be on LinkedIn tomorrow. Who knows? But the point is, is that these are things you can try in order to get some of those opportunities that you want. So that's a little... Little snippet for everybody there. Uh, Jake says, "Draft in Nashville is going to be a blast. We're trying to get a group to road trip up from Tallahassee. Of course he is. Jake does seem like <laughs> a road trip kind of guy. Uh, if that's the case, I will see you there. Yeah, there you go. You guys will have to connect. So Phil, you want you talked about wanting to be the next great silent reporter, a la Aaron Andrews. Does that help with your planning regarding all of your volunteer opportunities?" Is that still um, kind of your goal? And have the, has this kind of helped your, uh, your process? So I've kind of actually shifted. I guess I should have like been a little more clear on like what I actually like wanted to do. So my goal is I actually want to work in the NFL events like department like full time. And I do know that every fall there's they have openings for like the NFL, like for the Super Bowl, like just like temporary and it's just contracted that you like will just help with the Super Bowl. Um, and so I definitely know I'm going to be applying for that next year. I mean, even if I don't have all of that experience, I can at least try to sell myself and be like, Hey, this is, it would really, it would help me and beneficial. This is what I can do. Um, but reporter though, I know that like we had talked about, like, if you don't have those skills, you shouldn't necessarily try to pursue that. Or if you don't have any, like you shouldn't pursue it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have any skills on like the reporting side and broadcasting. So I've kind of shifted my focus more on like the events and like the promotions, the fan engagement and the entertainment side of it. Um, just because I didn't want to go after something that I have nothing to do with. <laughs> like no experience in, you know, to say the least. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because Glenn posted back up here. I snuck in while waiting for her on our waitress. <laughs> ha ha ha. Shh. Oh my God. We will not tell your life, Glenn. You. We will not tell your life. But thanks for tuning in. You're a dedicated fan. I love that. Um, he wanted to hear what you had to say, Casey. Okay. Right. So unless anybody has any further questions for Casey or for myself or anything about your sports career, you know, it's Valentine's day and everybody should go wrap it up and go have a good time with the rest of their family or whoever they're hanging out with this evening. Um, thanks for listening as always. I love having these interactions with all of you. Um, let me know too, in the comments, if you enjoyed having a guest tonight, no, no, just a guest in general. I mean, Casey was awesome. We learned a lot from her about her experience. If you like that, um, let me know. And we'll try to continue this pattern of trying to bring in some extra people to add some more information to the conversation. Um, and we can continue doing more along this line. This is like a very open format. Like we can do whatever we want, whatever I think is most beneficial to all of you guys, whatever you guys want to be connected to. So Casey, thank you so much for being here and discussing all this with us. I had a great time talking with you and I really appreciate you coming on. Oh, of course. Thank you. It was so much fun. All right, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks for tuning in.